<laughs> so, so anyway, uh, I just got cut off. So you know, whatever that that was kind of abrupt. I don't have any video editing uh, software, so you know, you just got cut off on the other video. Anyway, I was talking about Stay Puffed. Uh, they were they torched them at the end with the po uh, proton beams. Uh, and then there's the explosion at the top uh, on the on the miniature that they built for Dana's apartment building, and that just looks fantastic. Uh, and here's some stuff about Elmer Bernstein and the score to the movie, which carries so much of it. Um, you know, the, the theme everyone remembers, but like that score just, just persists in the background. And there's so many subtle variations to it. Uh, it's really impressive. <laughs> Here's some, here's some shots, some promo shots after the fact when the, the movie was really successful. This is looking like it's just going to go. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, now we go part two, the sequel. Um, anyway, I... Oh, crap. There was some stuff in here. All right, well, anyway. And yeah, they go into Ghostbusters 2. Uh, <laughs> Slimer Mark 2. That now... I should go on this. I'm not going to talk about Ghostbusters 2 that much. It's great. I love, I love Ghostbusters 2, but uh, I, I don't want to post up like an hour-long video. Um, and I don't want to give away the whole damn book either. I mean, obviously, if you're going to want to read it, you can't do it from the video, uh, unless this is a lot better camera than I had realized. So Slimer in Ghostbusters 2 wasn't so much a puppet as he was a suit. I'm considering going up to Tennessee to see Robin Shelby, who's the, who was the woman inside the suit. Uh, during the filming of Ghostbusters 2 and like this little print here like I think it would be pretty rad to bring that this, I guess it's a postcard uh, it'd be pretty awesome to uh, well it's just a print uh, see if I can get her to sign that because she's the best I've spoken with her online she's extremely good to the fans her and Ernie Hudson are always amazing to the fans uh, Dan Aykroyd's great as well but you have to go to one of his he doesn't go out to conventions. Um, Hudson and and uh, and Robin Shelby they go to conventions. Um, you know they'll they'll show up for charity events. Like they will they work like put it they put a lot in, uh, and they will always they'll always throw on a costume or or sign something or or give you a hug or whatever. Like they're great. Uh, Ackroyd you can find whenever he does his crystal head vodka signings because um, he does it has a, his own vodka company. Uh, which is, I honestly think is pretty all right. Like it's very clean. Uh, and the, the bottle's amazing because uh, it's that that crystal skull, um, which is you know if for nothing else you pay that extra money for that really nicely crafted package design. Uh, but yeah, it, it mixes well. I'm not a big vodka drinker, so I guess I can't tell the difference. But it's not like I know what bad vodka tastes like. It's not bad. People like to exaggerate. Uh, anyway. Uh, but he, if you go to one of his signings and you're wearing Ghostbusters gear, you go to the front of the line, he takes pictures with everybody, he, he uh, says hi, he will sign anything, and then he moves you along so he can talk about his, his product, his, his business. Uh, yeah, so we have a bunch of, we have the, okay, the, well the minx, that, that, that really stuck with me in Ghostbusters too, so I'll mention that. The woman's wearing a mink coat. And there's like a little bit of an animal rights commentary there where she walks through some of the psychomagnetic slime and the, and the minks on their coat spring to life and start biting her and she throws it on the ground and runs away. Uh, we have some shots of the Statue of Liberty. Um, you know, for the ending sequence. Originally they were going to have to fight the Statue of Liberty. I said I wasn't going to talk Ghostbusters 2, but now I'm talking Ghostbusters 2. They were going to fight the Statue of Liberty. That was going to be a bad scene. Uh, that would have struck all the wrong tones. I think people... There's already like half the fans out there aren't really huge fans of Ghostbusters 2. I think it would be a lot less if uh, if they destroyed the Statue of Liberty in the final fight. But they um, they were going to uh, plug into the, the power cables, those uh, um, the Con Edison power lines, and have the city's power, power uh, uh, supercharge their proton packs. Now... Their packs are nuclear powered. They provide an awful lot of power on their own. It was it was uh, that was a strange way to go. Um, yeah. So and then there's the river of slime. We have Vigo popping his face out of the painting. Uh, oh yeah, and the Run DMC on the soundtrack. I love the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. Uh, you had uh, you had Bobby Brown on our own. Uh, that that song shows up random randomly in my life, like when I don't expect it. Um, we have the Ghostbusters 2 logo um, standing outside of his cross, uh, the, the circle circle cross. And then we have the 
I believe it's one of the Fettuccinis painted this during the Renaissance, and then uh, Vigo had it painted over. Uh, but of course, once they defeated Vigo, uh, you know, that, that um, painting revealed itself. So yeah, it's, it's actually just a really excellent um, you know, Renaissance-style painting. As an art, you know, art major, I appreciate it. Of uh, you know you have you know Murray and and uh, Ramus and and Aykroyd and and uh, Hudson sitting there around the uh, the baby. Uh, was it, um, they were the was it Duschendorf. Uh, I forget what the two the two kids' names were that played Oscar. Uh, but it was Oscar Barrett, the baby of, uh, of Dana Barrett and and her unknown uh, interim sp uh, boyfriend and or spouse that they you know got they met they. She broke up with uh, Venkman in between Ghostbusters uh, 1 and 2, which is a five-year span. So in five years, uh, Venkman drove her away because he was a real dick. Um, and uh, then he, uh, she started dating somebody else. She, she got pregnant. She had the kid. And then the, uh, her, her husband or, or, uh, or boyfriend or, or whatever um, moves to London for the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, and, and then Venkman comes back into her life. In a five-year span, that's... Things move fast. It was the '80s. Um, it's definitely not not impossible or anything, or even unlikely. But it is. It does seem a little little fast. So we have the expanded Ghostbusters universe. They're going to go into the real Ghostbusters cartoon. We have the animated Ecto One, which is fantastic. Um, like you have, a, we have a cell in here of, of Peter Venkman. I guess it's got to be a reproduction. There's no way they put an original cell in each of these books. Um, Bankman, of course, looking nothing like Bill Murray, and you know, sounding like Lorenzo Music, then replaced by Dave Coulier later on. Uh, Lorenzo Music did a way better job, but he sounded too much like Garfield or something. There was a there's a lot of debate as to why he was changed. Um, some some sketches with with Stay Puft, the cartoon version of Stay Puft. In the cartoon, Stay Puft shows up, but he's not he's not the physical form of Gozer the Traveler. He's just a big dumb guy. Um, and he, he's a good guy in some episodes. They have him fight uh, Murray the Mantis in the uh, Thanksgiving Day episode. So watch that uh, on the, instead of the Thanksgiving Day parade. It's way more exciting to when one of the um, when one of the floats comes to life and then fights the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Uh, we have some. We have the the Boogeyman. We've got uh, animated Janine, the, the the better animated Janine. They did redesign her to be more more kid friendly, but I liked her as a sort of a screechy Brooklyn broad, just a firecracker. Um, giving abuse to the guys, pining after Egon. She's she's a lot more uh, lovey-dovey, huggy-kissy in the in the later seasons. I think on season three and onward. We got the Extreme Ghostbusters, eighteen years old now. It's Extreme Ghostbusters. Um, uh, you know they got they got a lot of flack for being really inclusive. You know does that sound yeah you know, or being too diverse or having too many minorities or having a guy in a wheelchair or whatever? They were it was a great show. It was really well written. Um, you know, we've got some some sketches here. Yeah, these were all for Extreme Ghostbusters. Uh, yeah, I guess Phil Barlow concept art. Now, Extreme Ghostbusters was made by the same studio that did the Men in Black series. I like that a lot as well. We've got some redesigned monsters from the previous pages. Uh, we have this this one from uh, Knock Knock, which I loved. I think that was Knock. Oh no, no, that was Knock Knock. That was from the opening sequence of Extreme Ghostbusters. Um, but we have the Grundle. That's one of the crazier episodes of Extreme Ghostbusters. It calls back to an original real Ghostbusters episode. We've got Sam Hine uh, right here, where my thumb is pointing. Uh, he's, he's the spirit of Halloween. He's not in the show. He was probably going to be in the show if they got another season. But he was uh, he was in the original Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, rather I should say, um, for the for two for both of their uh, Halloween episodes, their their first and their second season Halloween episodes, I think. And then uh, they, they bust him, they capture him, and then he escapes. Uh, we've got the, the video games. Uh, there's one really good video game and a bunch of not-so-great video games. Um, yeah, so we've got Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on the, on the old systems. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Ghostbusters, uh, Extreme Ghostbusters is on Game Boy Color. And then, uh, and then in the 2009 game, the 3D game, there was two versions of it. One for the PlayStation 2, and we got the PlayStation... Uh, there. And then the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. Um, oh, well, the PlayStation 2 was also on the Wii. But then the, and that was cartoony styled. And then we have uh, the Xbox 360, the PC, the PS3. Oh, you have that version of Ghostbusters, which is this right here, which is more realistic style. And I have, I have 
34 messages from the Atlanta Ghostbusters. I need to check in on that. And the comic books, as I showed you before, definitely read those. Like, I'm not kidding. Those are the best thing we've gotten in a long time. Like, look at that, Janine. Look at how friggin' great she looks. Um, a lot of callbacks. And, uh, that's uh, Dan showing, uh, was it Eric Delgado? Uh, uh, er, uh, no, Eric Burnham. Uh, Louis Del Delgado. Some, some scenes from that. Yeah, you see, you see most of the book at this point. And then the toys and things. Like, that was, that was something. Like, the real Ghostbusters produced so many toys. I had this firehouse. Um, well, that has to be an early version because there's nothing in it. Uh, there's the, the blaster guns. Oh, I, I totally had this thing. I remember I couldn't wait to get home to play it. My mom had gone to the hairdressers and they let me go into the closet because it was dark in there and unpack the thing and shine it on the wall because it projects a ghost on the wall. And then you, you flash the, the light at it to zap it. Um, yeah, I, man, this is... Yeah, it just keeps on going. Wow, that's, I didn't know that was official. So we, uh, that's my, that was my phone background for a while on the right. Um... And there's there's Adam Savage in his Ghostbusters gear. Very inaccurate. I'm I'm upset that he put the instead of you know Savage on his arm or on his uh, above his his chest. He's got a Ghostbusters logo like the like the cheap Ruby's costume. Like he really needs to go back and watch those movies. But no, he has he has a pretty nice pack. Uh, he made his own goggles because the store bought goggles weren't that great. He has the I believe he has the Mattel um, uh, PKE meter. But he doesn't seem as big of a fan of Ghostbusters as some other science fiction things, which is fine. Uh, he's, he loves Blade Runner and all that. Uh, you've got the Domo Kun and and uh, Lego stuff in the back. Um, but yeah, this is this is an outstanding book. I'm gonna sit down and read that uh, tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I recommend it to anybody who's a Ghostbusters fan. Like this is gonna be the the ultimate like covers everything compendium of Ghostbusters stuff probably for a while if you know maybe for good. Uh, and, and it's, it got a lot of information, a lot of high resolution photos out there. Um, so yeah, uh, gets, you know, gets my vote. Uh, again, you know, Joe Riccadelli from the Atlanta Ghostbusters, uh, says this book is the best and that you should all, you should all go out there and buy it. Uh, and maybe they'll, maybe they'll find some other stuff to dig up or maybe they'll do one of these for the 2016 movie if that ends up being good. I hope it, I ho really do hope it, it gets good. Any more good Ghostbusters stuff is always welcome. Um. But you know we we have to wait and see, like uh, we have to see what that what that looks like. But I'm I'm encouraged. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for th for watching. If you're still with me, and uh, yeah, have a have a good day. Uh, remember, don't bust alone. Uh, you know, no, don't cross the streams. And if uh, if anyone out there is you know, looking to be recruited into a franchise, let me know. I I can I can hook you guys up. Um, anyway. So uh, this is Joe Riccadelli, uh, a.k.a. Tank of the Atlanta Ghostbusters, signing off.